Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Watches and Whiskey. Adrian, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Roman? You're doing better than me. I had a bit of a hair problem today. Look at my f***ing hair! I look like Bert from Bert and Ernie! Ah! And <laughs> I badly cut my hand. Uh, you look good in a hat though. I'll give it to you. The VIP of all hats nice. The logo is better. But, you think? Yeah. What is your hat? It's all right. My hair is good today. Anyway, guys, uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, real quick, a lot of you guys, a lot of the fans, and a lot of the even guys in the business have continuously been sending us stuff as an appreciation for what me and Adrian do. And I can't have some of the stuff go unmentioned, so I am going to go. Th maybe each episode we can at least throw in a few things that were sent mm -hmm. to us as an appreciation back and mention you guys. I, I got an email uh, from a kid named Bruno, right? And uh, he started talking about how much passion he has for watches and how much he enjoys our show and so on and so forth. And he says, listen, this is watches and whiskey, but my family actually owns a winery, right? Mm. Uh, called Brilliam. I'm gonna say that's how you, I hope I pronounced it correctly, right? Where are they out of? Uh, they out of California. Okay. And uh, basically the idea was, is like, listen, I know you talked about cabs and Napa Valley, and you're a big fan of Napa Valley. Let me show you what some of us can do on the other side, you know, Sonoma and places such as that. Uh, basically taking a punt at Napa Valley, right? Uh, and I received a bunch of wines. So today we're gonna be- I'm down. Wine? I'm we're down, good? a little okay. low key today. So Wine, wine and langs. I see a lot of langs on the table. Uh, so. Basically, uh, I'm just going to read this off real quick. Roman, thank you for your support and for your interest in Brilliant Wines, but truly thank you for replying to Bruna and for encouraging his passion for the watch market. He, it, he was overjoyed to receive your email reply, thank you. Of course, when I read uh, his, the email that he composed for you, I simultaneously laughed out loud, teared up. What thoughtful, detailed words from my teenage son. Sounds like you are very proud of your son, and you should be. So they send us their big on Pinots, and they said that the Zen is absolutely amazing. Let's give the Pinot and the Zen a taste and see um, see what we're going to go with. You want to start with the Zen? Let me do the honors today. Since Just pour a little hands. bit so we can taste it first in case uh, yeah. we decide to go with the Pinot. That's good. Wish my senses were back to where they used to be. I tend not to drink Zins because they're a bit of a lighter wine. It is lighter. I was going to say. Pinot, Pinot's sort of uh, next up, but let's uh, let's give this a shot. Roman, have you learned nothing in Napa Valley? I learned you a lot, but I don't, new, I don't. You need a new cup. I, don't, I know. I don't want to make this episode <laughs> about wine. Uh, I just wanted to give a big shout out uh, to these guys. Thank you for sending these wines. We will try all of them eventually. I will bring one home and have one with my wife as well. A little more bold. Sweeter. You got sweet? I got sweet. I got a little more of a tangy kick. I actually prefer the Zin. Well, guess what? You're having the Zin. I'm going to have the Pinot. Moving on. You see a bottle of Blue Label. By the way, Blue Label on that other side of the table. Blue Label is actually one of my really good go-tos. A lot of people think it's cliche. A lot of people think it's overpriced. I think Blue Label is good value for the money. You know, about a $300 bottle, I guess, right now uh, on the market. And I have at least 20 Blue Label bottles that are there. I feel like Blue Label is for someone that is not a super connoisseur, just wants to enjoy a good glass of whiskey. And to me, Blue Label's always good. It's actually my go-to at the bar if I need one drink and be out. Get that nice hate of blue, because to me it's like, it's harsh, you know what I mean, I need to go. Well, if you're gonna go with the gas drinks. So, dear Roman and Adrian, during the pandemic I took time watching your videos for entertainment. I truly appreciate the time and effort you put into providing your viewers with information and entertainment. Please accept this bottle of Johnny Walker Blue for consumption on watches and whiskey. Sincere, sincerely, Nathaniel. I'm not going to mention his last name. Thank Nathaniel, you, Nathaniel, thank you very much. We're going to enjoy that on it. the next episode. Don't really want to drink wine and whiskey and wine. That would probably end bad. You guys remember I talked about the boys over at Watch Stand? They sent me a bunch of watch stands over. They made a double one. First, they sent me a single one. And again, I don't give shout outs to these companies, nor do I, do I accept sponsorships, but if I like the story behind it, you guys can go back to a previous video where I talk about how their company got started. I will always happy to give a shout out and help them in any way I can by basically getting it out there and so on and so forth. So I guess they sent me a new product. They made watch cases and everybody makes, a lot of people out there make watch cases, but let's see what this one is about. Nice packaging, we'll start there. Oh. Like it would be good for my wife. So this is a travel case. I like the purple. Uh, I love Although. the purple. I like how this pops. Uh, here's the smart thing about these. And let me just try to get this on camera. Is this is smart. 
how many times do you get a watch roll uh, or like I had a Louis Vuitton travel case and you mm. literally had to put one watch after another it's like you want the middle watch it's a problem you got to take the other watch off it becomes a little impractical I think by doing this and having these things snap off like this, I think, awesome. it's, I think it's super practical. So you really have access to every single one of your watches. And if you wanted to, I guess, take one out and keep sort of an empty compartment on a watch that may not fit or some jewelry, I guess that could be done as well. So watch stand, well done. Uh, guys, you know how to find them. Just, they're all over Instagram. Google watch stand and you can probably purchase it. I'm not sure if these are available for purchase yet, but I. Hope they are, but nevertheless, guys, thank you for this. I will use this. I will take this home and give this to my wife, actually, because she likes travel cases, and we do travel quite often. I think that's about it for shout-outs for this show. Thank you, guys. I'm going to try to do these. I'll actually do my own shout-out. Uh, over the last couple episodes, Roman did mention that I had that I had a baby, and I got a lot, a lot of love and feedback, emails, text messages, Instagram messages. I actually had, well, my, my main man, Ed, send me a coupon for diapers. <laughs> Congratulations. That's good. That's good. Yeah, so... Shout out to you guys. I appreciate it very much. And a congratulations to you yes. again. Yes. Can, can, we throw, can we throw a picture up? Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right. So, Ian, we'll get we'll get the latest picture. We'll throw it up there. Mama's doing fine. Baby's doing fine. Adrian. I'm good today. I'm, I'm, I'm well rested. I slept nice. You actually slept? Yeah. Right. yeah. What do we got to, on the menu today? Today we're talking about uh, the numbers of the month, right? Uh, profit margin, sales, et cetera. We mm -hmm. decided to give you a little sneak peek into... Uh, I guess we'll talk about March, because right now it is uh, April 2nd, right? Yep. Uh, so we'll talk about March. I think we had an outstanding month. What would you say was the standout for the month? The standout for the month? Well, let's talk about the big sales, right? Uh, big sales that carry great margins. Let's, uh, the Super Sonnery, I think, was a great sale. The, Su the Su Super Sonnery, the helicopter that we showed. The helicopter. Hugh Richard Meals, Rainbow Daytona. Rainbow Daytona. Um, Rainbow Daytona was an interesting story, and... Shout out to you if you're watching. We had a fan reach out yep. to us and says, listen, I want to sell a Rainbow Daytona. The gentleman happened to be in Switzerland. And we managed to call a friend of a friend who managed to facilitate the transaction on a spot. We had contracts in place. Listen, we, drew, we, drew up, we drew up a legal contract. So look, at the end of the day, trust is great. But when you're talking about a, a, a $300,000 plus watch, mm -hmm. you certainly want to cover your I's and 100%. dot your T's. And I've been preaching this guys to you forever. You know, it's funny. He actually appreciated the fact that I, I was asking so many questions, that I drew up a contract, that there were so many steps involved. He's like, okay, I'm dealing with professionals. Right? Right. Uh, but, so but, I made him feel warm and fuzzy inside. So, I think I think it's it's not just a question of about showing professionals. This is how we handle transactions, yep. especially first-time transactions, right? We always welcome anybody to fly into our office, right? The first thing we offer is say, hey, listen, you don't feel comfortable, fly in, see who you're dealing with, right? Uh, you can pull our building up on Google Maps, so you can see exactly where you're going and what we look like, right? But uh, if if does if it does become impossible, seemingly impossible deals can still be done. And I have to thank the, the years in the business, the experience, and the connections that we have. Because I'm doing one in Philippines as we speak, early as we speak. What do you want? Oh. Don't worry about it. Talk about it later. Yeah, we'll put it on Instagram <laughs> later. <laughs> All right. So uh, so that was that was an interesting deal. Uh, would you say who do you think the winner was overall? For uh, for the month, the winner overall in terms of what gross margin or, or I mean gross profit. Gross. I was I was gonna say revenue. Rolex is always number one. Well, not always. Oh, actually, no, this month. No, this month it wasn't Rolex. We did a, a ton yeah. of Rolex business this last month, but I don't think Rolex so was the winner. That's a tough call. That's a tough call. Well, you had Paddock, you had Richard Meal, you had a few expensive Richard Meals. So in terms of revenue, I think Richard Meal would be the winner. In terms of in terms of profit margins. Just say P was the winner. Uh, I would because just because we sold a few off the beaten path APs, there wasn't a lot of uh, there wasn't a lot of Royal Oaks, Royal Oak Chronos, or which all no margins which, on which which carry small margins. It was more specialty pieces, so mm -hmm. that's probably a good. One. I I have to look at the figures. You didn't show me the figures. I mean, I, I didn't want to get into looking at the whole report and and actually uh, margin. I will tell you this: uh, we have succeeded our average margins on watches overall uh, over the past, let's say, uh, go to go, if I go back to last year, uh, margins have exceeded last year's margins. Usually, you know, it tends to average out to that 10, let's say to 12%, and we were over 14, we were close to 15% margins on watches. And I think it, it was due to the fact of some of those abnormal watches that we sold that we bought right and uh, we bought right and we managed to sort of move along Rolex, with the market. Ro the Rolex profit margin is still below 10%. No, they're not. Still. For the f actually, for the first time ever, 
we managed to create our market margins on Rolex last month with 10.1%. Well, that's, that's also because we did a lot of heavy pre-owned pieces. That's kind of true, that's but kind I of but I th but I think the biggest contribution was the fact that we literally bought Rolexes that took a week to two weeks to get here at a fair market price, and two weeks later that market price shifted. And I think that's why we're making up normal. Well, yeah, oh yeah, okay. So you're, you're you're figuring in a couple of green Daytonas, a couple of platinum Daytonas that well, by, sudden, the by the time they got, they got here, here yeah. you know, they went up ten yeah. percent. So if not more, <laughs> if not more. But yeah. look, speaking of which, you know, we committed on the Daytona to someone uh, at a price. And I'm not going to yep. mention any prices. We committed to somebody at a price. And I guess I can flat out say this. It took two weeks for the this average, watch. The average, the average company, I'm not going to mention names, would have killed the deal. Would have killed the deal. But we committed to someone at a price, and we left $15,000 on the table two and a half weeks later. It took two, almost three weeks almost for three the watch. Weeks. So for the watch to get here, and it went up in value that much. But we gave a verbal commitment, and guess what? We left 50, consciously left $15,000 on the table knowing that, Again, our commitment is worth a lot more than profits. Uh, so overall, I'm going to say it was a good month. I think uh, we uh, we this month is exciting. We got a new salesperson. We had a uh, we had mm -hmm. a kid. I call them kids because they're younger. We had a kid from marketing started. My kid still? Uh huh. My still you're, kid. You're always going to be a kid. In oh my shit! <laughs> so we had a kid uh, from marketing that started in marketing, uh, marketing slash customer service. Slowly got into customer service, dealing with a lot of ag some of the aggravation that goes on behind the scenes and so on and so forth. He's hungry too. Good. He's hungry. He's you're gonna be seeing him. I'll I'll shout out his uh, I'll shout out his Instagram on my Instagram later on once he gets it all set up. And uh, we're gonna have a new salesperson starting, so that's that should be really really exciting. We'll see we'll see where it goes. Listen, it takes a will and a hunger, a certain hunger and a certain character to do this job. And I hope he has it. See, see the hair see the hair loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when Adrian started, he was six uh, three inches taller, blue eyes, and, and long blonde hair. That's and now yeah. here we are. Uh, let's talk about Lange. I think it's time to sort of let the cat out of the bag. You guys have heard me and Adrian hint on uh, what's uh, of buying up Lange's. We were looking to buy Lange's. There was a lot of Lange transactions. We've bought a lot of Lange's and sold a lot of Lange's in the past uh, couple of months. And I guess, uh, listen, not to give away uh, trade secrets, but we can go back and flash back to so many sleepers. In fact, I feel like Ian can go back and make a Sizzler video where I said, oh, this is a sleeper. I think this is definitely a sleeper. Sleepers, right? It's a huge sleeper. Sleeper, I think. These are sleepers. The sleepers, the sleepers. And Maybe on our next Watches and Whiskey, we'll prepare for that. And we'll go back and show, and I'll show you all the sleepers that I talked about and talk about current market price versus when I said it was a sleeper, how long it took and where they are now. But, you know, I've been sort of, we've been sort of introducing Lange's as sleepers. Mm -hmm. Now, Lange, you want to talk about the history of Lange? about it <laughs> <laughs> listen Lange has been around believe it or not since 1845 they're German <laughs> good, good job <laughs> from Glashute one of our YouTube uh, subscribers <laughs> mentioned in the comments it's not Lange it's long so the founder <laughs> it, so, the, so the founder Ferdinand which founded the company in 1845 in Glashute uh, it, was, it wasn't until he introduced his son and the company went from being a long a Lang, however you guys want to pronounce it, to A Lang and Zune, which is a Lang and Sons in German, I'm assuming. Oh, is that is that what that Sunni means? What you Sun. know the models Richard Lang, that's after the son of Fernand, because it wasn't until Richard joined the company he, that the company became A Lang and Sune. And that was in I don't remember like Sune means son? Huh? Zune, I think it's Zune. Zune. Lang and Zune. I am not a I don't speak German, but I'm assuming that's exactly what that is. Uh, what does F A stand for? I think for? the A stands for Adolf. He was Fernand Adolf Lange. Uh, and then that's where A. Lang came from. And mm -hmm. then when Richard joined, he became a, uh, a. Lang and Sons. Later, you see a lot of Richard Lang models and so on and so forth. One thing I'll mention about uh, Richard, he was actually the mayor of Glashute at one time. He was actually an important political figure in Glashute. Uh, and Richard Mealy was the mayor of Switzerland at one point as well. Richard Mill? Yeah. You actually said that like <laughs> it's complete truth. You know what? I almost bought that. <laughs> but, Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> drink to that. Uh, with that said, Unfortunately, I'm going to fast forward to the year of 1948 when the Soviet Union took over uh, half of Germany. Yeah. And uh, it was, the company was nationalized. Now, if you guys know a little bit of history of communism, they tended to nationalize things, which basically meant they took stuff away from rich people and rather than dispersing or giving it to somebody, they basically destroyed it. So the company was dead since 1948 till 1990. So Walter, who was the great-grandson of Fernando, maybe... Great, great grand, great son, whatever it is. 
he reestablished the company in 1990 after the unification of Germany and the wall came down. And that's the Langenson that we know today, which is also currently part of the Richmond Group. Again, I don't want to bore you guys with a lot of history. Just wanted to throw that, throw a little bit of that in there. Throw a little bit of history in there because that's what I love to do. You, I'm sure you can find all that information on the, on the internet yourselves. I am uh, drinking wine. You need to excite me a little bit more. I also want to fall asleep. Okay, so let's talk about the long game. <laughs> so what is it that, why is it that we feel that long games are sleepers? Uh, um, first of all, I want to know your opinion of the brand because I guys know that I'm very highly spoken about this brand. I love the watches. I love the watchmaking. What is your opinion on them as watches? We keep general? using the term undervalued because in, in, in theory they are undervalued. A lot of people compare long games to paddock, right? For some reason that always seems to be the gold standard, paddock. But when you compare a lot of the, the similar Lange models, in terms of engineering, in terms of ergonomics, in terms of movements and everything, they're on par, if not better, on a lot of the I've models. Always, I, always felt, I always felt that their, so, uh, their watch making is superior to that of Paddock. It could be. Like, we're sitting here, this, this Zeitor is, is in front of me right now. Why you got to have a German accent every time you say that? I, well, that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. And it's just absolutely, like, the, the movement well, in the let's back. Look, let's show the front first. Yeah. It's actually my favorite model Lange ever produced. Well, you know what I just bought? I know. I bought a luminous Lange. I know you wouldn't want one of those. Well, we're talking about Zeitwerk. You want right you want a luminous Zeitwerk? That's going to be a little. No, one. I want a luminous Datagraph. That's what oh. I want. But the the finishing on that movement is absolutely insane. Nobody can compare. Um, I just want to talk about finishes, all. It's the same one. Oh, we're showing the we same have, watch. We have, we, two we, have two. we have a road, we have a brand new one and a pre owned one. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Uh Datagraph would probably be one to show off. Do we have one? Datagraph? Uh, I know we did. Can't see from here. <laughs> what if I what if I could pinpoint the models just based on the back of, of the movement? That would be pretty That'd insane. Be pretty dope. I don't think we brought the datagraph. But here's an annual calendar. Right? Huh? No? Hold on. No, there's no datagraph here. Okay. Well, I know we have one. All right, so continue, please. Okay. Um yeah, so that being said, I, I truly feel they're undervalued. And people ask me all the time, like when I go on Instagram or I reach out to clients, like, well, what do you know that I don't know? I was like, well, nothing. I truly feel that in the market today, this brand is supremely undervalued. They make unbelievable watches, and I feel like there's a lot of room for them to grow. So that's uh, how I feel about And them. I'm going to give you a little bit of... Also, yeah. also, I love what I actually wanted to mention was uh, I had one client that was trying to sell me an Odysseus for a while. He was unsure that he wanted to, he was unsure that he didn't want, and uh, he wanted to. And he's like, well, what are your thoughts about that watch in general? I was like, honestly, I'm not a fan of the Odysseus. This, 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 oh, this no, the steel or the gold? No, so this is the white gold version. I said, I'm not a fan of the watch. You know, although in a previous wa Watches and Whiskey episode, I had mentioned that if I was, um, if I took over to Brand Lang, what would I do? And what I would do is exactly what Paddock did with the Nautilus. They introduced a sports variation of their their line, and pretty much brought everything up with it. No, it's not going on. So I said, Lange needs to do that as well. well. But okay. So Lange came out with Odysseus, and it's exactly what happened to the brand. Now, we got the Odysseus in stock, and when I actually got it in hand, instantly fell in love with it. Good. I couldn't believe it. On pictures, I didn't like it, and then when I got it, rubber you know, strap. It's funny, a lot of people go after the stainless steel version, which is trading for like triple its retail yeah. value, right? Uh, where I'm actually more of a fan of the white gold than I am of the stainless I think, steel. Because I think I, think I am too. I think the stainless steel, the way the bracelet was designed, I wasn't really a fan. I wish they stuck, you know, to their original uh, uh, bracelets as they made them in the past, such as on this line here one, right? So this particular bracelet, this mesh but yet heavy bracelet, it's not like flimsy, it's not cheap looking. It's a nice, heavy, yet mesh-like bracelet. And to me, I wish they kind of stuck with that on a Odysseus, but again, they have to make something new. This bracelet hasn't been made in 10 years, so seven years or so. So I, I think they should I think they should continue the, that line, and I think they're going to do extremely well. And I think the rest of the brand And also is the fact that they made suit. the white gold on a rubber strap, I think to me, uh, I felt like the steel could have been on a rubber strap versus the one on a bracelet being white gold, let's say, or platinum. I mean, you well, know what I mean? They, well, they have a leather strap with it as well. Right. But the one that we got in was on rubber, and it was extremely, extremely comfortable. Yeah, it was extremely comfortable. And, and it was actually my favorite pusher system. So I'm going to tell you my part of this story with Longaze, and I'm going to start from the very top by comparing. Oh, let's compare brands and groups, right? Richmond Group, uh, IWC, Panerai, Roger W. Yeager, Langenson, Vacheron, Vacheron, PSJ. Uh, you have uh, Bomber Shares in there as well. So they own a bunch of uh, mm -hmm. watch brands, right? And if you look at all the brands that I just mentioned, or most brands that I just mentioned, none of them actually remotely even come close to that of Audemars Piguet, to 
that of Rolex to that of uh, to that of uh, Richard Mille. Comparing to, to even, what even sales in terms of popularity. Oh yeah, right. I th I'm going to give credit to Francois from AP for being the first one to go the boutique route, right? Where a lot of people thought it was suicidal, and in, in, in the market that we're in today, a lot of people felt that it was suicidal for somebody to cut out the authorized dealers and try to go boutique only and shift majority of your business to your own boutiques. Why? Because a why would I go in the boutique and pay full retail for something when I am able to call Luxury Bazaar or go into even an AD that's going to give me a slight discount or some or a big discount on a piece that I want to buy, right? And if you think about it, yeah, it does sound dumb. Why would you go boutique only when this stuff is available elsewhere unless you make that stuff not available elsewhere? The only way to do that, the only way to do that is to do what? Is to cut production. By cutting production, you're cutting out the middleman, and it sucks for the middleman because these ads have been around for years, some of them for a hundred years, supporting these brands. But listen, well, the world changes, and that was the brand's way to combat the gray market as well as making the brand more popular. Because the less accessible something is, the more people usually want it, right? Supply mm -hmm. and demand is the oldest trick in the book, and I think AP that did, did that extremely well. Richard Mill follows suit. Paddock has always been elusive in terms of their popular models, and it's a popular model that brought everything back up. I don't think Paddock is quite there yet. But I think if tomorrow, in, in terms of where AP is, uh, in terms of production and cutting down production and cutting out some of the middleman and just going strictly boutique only, I don't think they're quite there yet. If you look at majority of their lines or majority of their watches, right, you can still get out there and get a lot of Paddocks at a discount. If you had a slight discount, a big discount, it doesn't really matter. Actually, when you... What eight piece can you get out there today and get at a discount? Or Richard Mills for that matter. Richard Mills is zero. Forget. Richard Mills is absolutely zero. Uh, Watermark. It's not true. It's not true. What? You can get you can get them at a discount. Which one? Well, it would be a oh, tiny you're, percentage. You're, you're talking about walking into the store. I'm talking about walking into a deal, or actually just generally buying anywhere at Richard Mills well, discount, brand new, brand new. No. No. So. Paddock is not quite there yet because look, I can name. They do a, give deals. Yeah, I can, I can give, I can name you a dozen paddocks off the top of my head, on which I will give you a discount gladly because I can buy it at a discount, right? So, so what happens is in order, in order to follow, in order to make that model work, right? You can never make it work in a scenario where you have a lot of ads, we have a lot of product out there, and then you all of a sudden open up ten extra boutiques, and now your boutiques are not doing any business because you're being beat by the guys online, you're being beat by the authorized dealers. Francois was the first one, I give him credit, take my hat off to him, to do this, and a lot of people follow suit. So the Richemont group is saying to themselves, wait a minute, look at us. We're one of the most powerful watch groups out there, right? We're one of the biggest companies out there. We have so many brands, out, great brands, IWC, Jaeger, Roger W, all these Longays. Vashram. Vash it's, it's insane yeah. that what's happening in the market to all these brands, and they're simply killing us. Right? Forget about the Swatch group, like Breguet and Blanc Pond or Glashut, uh, or Glashut for that matter, right? When was the last time you got a call for a Blanc Pond? Actually, today. Really? Somebody wants to sell a Blanc Pond. Oh, somebody <laughs> wants to sell a Blanc Pond. There you go. So, with that said, it's Richemont is saying to themselves, okay, I, I got to do something. Now, they can't do it drastically. They can't take every single one of their brands and do what AP did with one brand. It's a lot easier to do it with one brand, right? Because nobody looks at the Richemont group as the brand. People look at each individual watch company as a brand, right? So, they said, okay. We're gonna start with these guys because they looked at everything that they have and they said, you know what? I think this is a good brand to do this with. Why? Quality, price point, it's a, a lot more expensive. Some of the our other counterparts on you know what I mean? Well, Lange does run their, their ships to just based off conversations I've had with some of our clients in an AP paddock, Richard Mill esque Rolex way now. Yes, like they do for they started that. Like for example, um, I had somebody call me and say Hey, would you like to buy this Odysseus? I'm like, well, here's the price that I would pay for it. So his premium over retail didn't really make sense for him to do the deal. So I'm like, okay, let me ask you a question. If we do this deal, does that help your allocation moving forward? And he said, no, it doesn't. That being said, they're already starting that process. It's already in place. If you, if you, place. You can't walk in today and buy like a strike in time as I work, right? Mm -hmm. You have to buy a couple of pieces. You have to have history right. with this. So they're starting to do that slowly but surely. But to speed this up, the next logical move, and I'm not telling you I have a crystal ball, but pay attention. The next logical move for them to speed up this process, take advantage of a super duper hot watch market, this, which we are in today, is to drastically cut production. And I, once, dis I, I disagree with you. There's not enough demand for that, for, for those brands. 
Longi, yes. Any other brands they mentioned? No. Hold on. I'm strictly talking. We're talking. This episode. This is about Longi. Longi. This is why we brought all these Longis, okay. right? Longi. So, so, so what they're gonna do is drastically cut production, mm -hmm. and by drastically, Longi makes anywhere from five to six thousand watches a year. I wouldn't be surprised that next year's production planning, they're gonna plan to make twenty five hundred models. Already, the model, like you said, is in place of allocating pieces and so on and so forth, and you're going to see. A what happened to Odysseus? You're going to you're going to see what happened to F. P. Jorn happened to Longi in the next year to year and a half. And there's my prediction for you guys as far as those sleepers. Now, you're gonna come and ask me, say, Roman, maybe I should invest in a few Longis. No. You should only buy Longis if you like them. Do I think Longis are a smart buy right now? Absolutely. And uh, again, because a lot of the Longi design is so similar, to tell you which one specifically, I wouldn't. Of course, there were limited edition Longis out there. Certainly go after those because those are no longer made. Old models, like the stuff that we were that were considered back in the day as we used to consider them dogs, right? Like the stuff that wouldn't sell, like this cabaret, mm -hmm. for example, right? Well, guess what? They didn't make too many of them. They don't make them anymore. So certainly a watch I would go after as that potential sleeper because Zeitwerks is still being made. The Saxonias is still made. A lot of these things are still being made. Where those that haven't, that are no longer made, those are the ones you may want to consider going after. But again, not as an investment, as something you truly like and can appreciate. Because this brand is definitely one to be appreciated, and I've appreciated it for years and years in the business. I always said, this is the brand. Anything to add before we move on? That's funny. I remember a couple of years ago when my dad had a, he had a Lang One Time Zone rose gold, and of all the watches he's owned. He got the most compliments on that watch. Yeah, the time zone. The right. most compliments. Paddock's he owned everything. The Lang one time you zone, to pick he got the most. If your favorite Lange. It's a Zeitwerk. The, which one? Specifically which one? Oh, I, thought you, I thought you meant in terms of like which, which line of lungs. Which one if I had to choose? Damn, you got me there again. It's, can I go between two? Sure. Datagraph Luminous. Striking time. <laughs> The Zeitwerk, right? I will, Zeitwerk striking you know, time. not to get too specific, I would certainly pick a, a striking time, but I think I wish it wasn't so big though. The striking time Zeitwerk, I would certainly pick, or just a Zeitwerk, and I would definitely go with a time zone as well. Like, I would have a time zone. I love the time zone. Like How about the, the, the luminous data? They made, they made a time zone, they made a time zone uh, in Rose Gold for the Singapore market that had like a black dial instead of a white dial and had like a little red hand and it was oh, made for the Singapore market or boutique or whatever it was. That is a beautiful time zone. Uh, let's move on to hypothetical budget increase. So here it says Luxury Bazaar, and Luxury Bazaar has got an additional five million to use for the company in any aspect. This launches monthly profit battle, Adrian versus Roman. So five million. So I guess we're talking about five million dollars induced outside of our regular revenue. Just all of a sudden, boom! There's extra five million dollars. Okay, wait. Month. What are we go? Okay, five million dollars, and you have to clarify this. I, I can't clear this. Poof po po speculation, $5 million fell on our feet. Pure speculation. Or $5 million came, some investor came, we have to give a return. Or $5 million. No, 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 no. no $5 investor. million dollars came. Exactly. We okay. got, you, we got, I, we moved some things around, dropped up some inventory, scaled down something or other, and here's $5 million go. Can we up it to 10? <laughs> I mean, we can up it to 30, but let's, let's keep it at five. $5 million, what I would do. Today, what I would do, I think I would dump. Forget, forget the third dump. I think I would allocate a good percentage of that into proper marketing, proper marketing budgets. Because a lot of times what happens when uh, people in our industry or industries in general come up with a huge sum of money is they lose their minds, right? They don't think straight. Well, Just, relative to our revenue, that's not such a large amount of money. This is but, but it can a nice be because, because what can happen is, oh my God, if I it's have, extra, I have, you're right. Because you have to understand that when, when I go out there and buy things, I buy with, I, I, I buy very calculated. Right? I'm very careful with what I buy. I, I know in the back of my mind what I can sell wholesale and what I can sell for retail. So for some people, they get a huge uh, injection of money and they go crazy. They start buying up everything. And making mistakes. And making mistakes. So on that, in that sense, I would not do anything different than I'm doing now. However, I would probably put 20% of that. Let's not, let's not say 20, let's, put, let's say 10%, $500,000. You can do a lot with a five hundred thousand dollar market. Listen, we already spent about a hundred grand a okay, month on but, marketing, but, right? But Maybe mar a little bit more. But marketing is a is a perfect formula. You know how much you put in the marketing and how much comes out of that. So I'll agree put, with that, except that I would probably put it into because we already have a, a, a healthy budget for marketing, which we you know we set ahead of time, and uh, I would put that in into something that 
maybe wasn't in the budget or so, or, or maybe to try like say TV commercials or some example. type of improvement so, something new in, in terms of our marketing efforts you know like we have, something we ha we're not doing already exactly because we know pay-per-click is dead you know it's not it's right. never worth the money uh, in fact uh, with the competition out there for pay-per-click you can often you can set a budget of fifty thousand dollars and often you will not spend it with Google because there's just not enough right there's not enough volume for you to spend those uh, pay-per-clicks so 10% of that, so let's say 500,000. So now I have four and a half million left, right? I say I would. How much is a new Bugatti? I guess it depends on the money you get. <laughs> <laughs> is four and a half enough? <laughs> so 500,000 hours on the marketing and the rest of the Bugatti. <laughs> right. Uh, I would probably spend another, I would probably spend another two million and buy up some older Richard Meals. What I mean by older richer meals, discontinued pieces. Discontinued pieces. A lot of the tens, fives, fours, thirties, fours, eights, stuff like that. Twos even. Did I mention twos? Twos, threes. And I would put them away and not try to flip them. I, I would put them away, get them serviced, get them proper because I really feel that, even though they are really up in market value today compared to what they were a year ago. Well, along with everything else, I think that I actually like those richer meals better than the ones that are coming out today. Well, the NTPTs and the crazy stuff that's going on the dial. I think it's getting a little it's, bit it's played out. they got to do something. I, I think it's getting a little bit ridiculous. The watch is still absolutely phenomenal today. However, an ARM4, for example, split second, is probably my favorite watch that they made. I think it's absolutely what killer. Makes, what makes that split second chronograph special outside of all the other chronographs? What makes that special? Yes. What do you mean? It's a single clutch system versus a double clutch system. Sure. If you want to get in the nuts and bolts, I'm not talking about the actual watch itself, the way it looks, <laughs> functionality. Rose gold? Uh, you know, platinum, because it's so rare. I think I'd go rose gold. I look, I, strictly looks wise, I like Pla the rose gold. No, yeah. So I would, gold, I, I, would, I would put some money into them. I would get them serviced properly. Get all the well by you buying them yeah. and sending them away for again, service. Two, again, you're, you're gonna be putting away for six to nine months regardless. Uh, that's okay. But I mean, okay. just by doing well, that, you know. And now that I think about it, two million dollars may buy you ten pieces, not even, <laughs> right? right? So, okay, but I, I would buy a few things like that, get them serviced, because I feel, I feel like th there's still enough room for them to grow, whereas it's a great entry model Richard Mille for somebody to get into, because right now, if you want to buy a Richard Mille, it's just completely out of anybody's budget. You know, you got RM5s that are over $110,000 today. It's just crazy, right? Um, continue to do what we're doing with so Rolex. You still have two and a half left. So two and a half left, I would put them, I would probably spend another... Half a million, carefully finding certain lengths. So where are we at? Three million. Three million, and the rest I would just increase your day-to-day -day revenue. Just create uh, increase day-to-day -day -day revenue. Yeah, that's what I would do. I mean, I don't know. You're a hard. I, 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 you're I, a hard act to follow. I, I agree. I agree with you on the market. I know my dad is probably like, if my dad was listening to this. Would they build jewelry? Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, Adrian tends to forget we're not just a watch company, we're also a pretty big jewelry company. Yes, we And look, if you think about it, we kind of just did that, right? Uh, the, the story now is that we're trying to scale down our wholesale side of the business tremendously. And, you know, it used to be, you know, if you go back five years, we're 85% wholesale, 15% retail. Right now, we're starting to slowly hit that 50% benchmark, right? Uh, with that said, I want to flip it the other way. I want to be 85% retail and 15% wholesale. A lot of benefits to that. You, you don't have to hold as much inventory. You don't have as much accounts payables and receivables when you're not doing wholesale. Just not as much uh, debt inventory that tends mm -hmm. to save. Because when you're doing wholesale, you buy things in bulk. And there's always that percentage of goods that's considered to be crap that just kind of sits and it takes forever to sell. And financial doesn't make sense. But with that $5 million, technically, we kind of already did that. We just took, we just took five major brands off. Uh, mm -hmm. the wholesale market. Uh, Bulgari, Cartier, Van Cleef. Bulgari, Cartier, Van Cleef, Chopard, Tiffany, and Chanel. Those were the mm -hmm. five brands we started. Where we literally walked into our vault, we took all the bins that has that jewelry, we put it on the different shelves and said, do not touch, meaning that it's for the retail strictly. Because what happens is when you start wholesaling the stuff, you a lot of times you wholesale to your competition. It's a two step forward, one step back. With that said, having done that, that's when I would take that money and we're just starting to do the same thing with watches, obviously. That's when I would take that marketing money and I would gear it towards beeping up that part of the business, literally specifically uh, advertising that product that we held back and we will not wholesale to anybody, strictly to the retail consumer acquiring clients. And that five hundred thousand dollar budget would probably be more than more of a million dollar budget. And for me to tell you that I would take the rest of the four million dollars, we have enough inventory to do this with. 
I would probably take the rest of the four million dollars is I would spend two more million dollars on that type of inventory again certain jewelry brands beef that up right if and slowly but surely scale to all the other brands that we carry because we carry a multitude of brands with that said I would also do the same thing with watches but the other two million dollars because of this model I would have to keep in a reserve because when you sort of freeze up X amount of dollars in merchandise right let's say if we freeze up 10 million dollars in merchandise of course the sales velocity retail is not as high as that of wholesale so your revenue suffers but your margins go up right so my thought process is that that two million dollars should make up for at least eight million in merchandise let's say i decide to freeze up and say this is retail strictly until somebody walks into my website clicks buy it now calls in and says i want that watch it's not being sold same goes for jewelry and that's where again only two million of that would go to beef up certain merchandise on the website of course jewelry and watches and the other two million I would almost have no choice but to hold back otherwise I will run out of money because the revenue may go down slightly in an X amount of time and okay, you, but you're, you but cash flow I, 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 I 100% agree with everything that you're saying but you're coming at this as we only have five million dollars Right, you're right. You're running this like this is our entire. Bar- this no, no, no. The, the idea, no, the idea was is we're getting five million dollars on top of what we already have. On yeah, top of on top of what right. we already have. Yeah. So it's you know, look, it's no secret. We talked about this numerous times. You know, we can be a millionaire on Monday and by Monday evening, Monday Absolutely. morning and by Monday evening we're broke because, Absolutely. unfortunately, in our business there's not a set budget for buying because if we've tried this, we've many tried times. this numerous times yeah. until you get that one phone call. Hey. Roman, I got an RM0004. I want to sell you at this price, which is a smoking deal. And all of a sudden, that budget for the week, that you, let's say you, you budgeted to spend a million dollars that day, and all of a sudden, you just spend an extra 400 There's never enough money in this business. There's never enough never money in this business, business, which is why I was very clear when I said, hey, $2 million, that $2 million, we're going to need it as a cushion. <laughs> like, we won't be able to spend it. Otherwise, it'll be literally a day later, that $5 million will be gone, and we'll be in the same boat as we are on a daily. So I feel like that see it's, it's like a catch-22 you it, does, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to hold cash in our business right yeah. like it would be dumb for me to have two million dollars in my bank account it's the dumbest thing you can do you want to have it in merchandise yeah. that brings you a return yeah, exactly. but at the same token there are days where like well should i wish i had that two million dollars yeah. sitting there you know yeah so uh deal, deal, deals just fly rap at, at a rapid pace at us yeah, like I, every morning same thing about to hit the shower roman calls me <laughs> then our day starts from there and I'm like, oh my God, Roman, where do I begin? Because I get up really okay, early. Okay, well, so it's like, wait, 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 I got to tell the shower story then. <laughs> no, so no, today's April 2nd. So um, I sat there and, you know, every, every, every April Fool's, we try to fool each other somehow. So I got a story. No, about we don't. I, told, I forgot it was April. Who yeah. thinks like well, that? Well, people <laughs> usually do forget it. I like, I often, like, I've been fooled many times because I simply forgot it's I April pour Fool's. Pour a drink, please. <laughs> uh, you were doing this in, right? In yes. This in. I'm slurring my words already. So before we go, I'm going to pour you that, and I'm going to tell you, before we go, I'm going to tell you this story. So you heard us mention the, the deal we did with the mm-hmm. Rainbow Daytona out of Switzerland, right? So the scenario is that we bought a watch from somebody whom we never met, somebody that we don't really know, uh, that, uh, you know, watched us on YouTube, reached out, did a whole contract thing. But at the end of the day, we weren't physically there to receive the watch. We weren't physically there. You know, we relied on a third party to authenticate right, the watch. It was a whole to do, right? Let me just add that uh, Rolex Rainbow Daytona, as you know, can be easily replicated with an actual real watch with the exactly. aftermarket gem set bezel. You and you, and you, have you can finagle the card or whatever, and the card, next right. thing you know. So. I mean, cards are really hard to finagle. If I have the card in my hand, I'll know it's been messed with, right? right? But considering this deal was done in Switzerland and what, we weren't physically present there, we relied, well, listen, we relied on a good friend and a professional. So long story short, I called Adrian. I, no, I sent him a WhatsApp in the morning. It was like 7.40 something. I'm like, we have an issue, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Immediately I get a phone call, what's going on? I'm in my car. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, and I hear the shower in the background. I was like, yo, you getting ready to go to the shower? Are you, I'm like, are you in the shower? He's like, no, but I'm getting ready to go into the shower. Um, he's like, what's the problem? <laughs> I I'm <did>. like, <laughs> I just got off the phone with customer XYZ. I was on the phone with him for the last 35 minutes and he ripped me a new one. He's like, what happened? I'm like, the Daytona that we bought? Guess what? And it was his deal. I'm like, the Daytona that you bought is a real Daytona with a fake aftermarket bezel that's done so good that it even fooled a professional in Switzerland and somebody finagled the card. He in turn sold that watch to somebody else. It was a big scandal. I was like, I don't know what to tell him. This is absolutely insane. Now, Adrian is a bit of a drama queen when it comes. He starts throwing shit. I hear shampoo bottles flying. Bleep, 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 right? 
and he's like, oh my God. And I hear him, like he's already, he's, I, I, you can tell when somebody's talking on the phone with you, they put you on speaker and they start typing stuff. I'm like, wait, 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 before you type anything. I'm like, hang on. I'm like, I already spoke to him. I'm like, do me a favor, chill, go in the shower, think about what date it is today, and I'll see you in the office. Bleep, 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 bleep. I got, I got so good. I walked out, I walked out of shower, shower, my hands were shaking like this. My wife is in bed with my baby, she's like, it was wrong. I'm going to kill him. I'm like, better watch his back. He's like, what happened? The like, Roman well, just April, like that was the best April Fool's prank uh, ever. And and guess what? <laughs> you have a year to think about what to do to me next year. But in the internet, we're going to wrap this show up. This was a great show. Uh, again, guys, we laid out a bunch of long games. Didn't really get into details of them because... This could take up an entire episode. We just wanted to show you some eye candy, for lack of a better word. But uh, we thank you for tuning in. This was a great yep. show. Cheers, Adrian. Cheers. And uh, we'll see you guys next week on Watches. Well, and Whiskey. This was technically Watches. I, like the, I actually like, like the wine version. Yeah, but it makes you go to sleep. Well, I'm not sleeping. I'm, up. I'm good. You sure? Yeah. All right, well, cheers to that. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>